stupid gadgets. Today, I want to talk about some of those, why they ever got added into the game, and why they should never, ever, ever be added into a modern day setting Battlefield game again. Whoever was responsible for adding these in, I really hope has seen the backlash to them and made them realise what silly decisions they really were. Just for clarity, I won't be talking about the UCAV in this video, as DICE have now fixed the gadget and it does actually require some skill to unlock and to use, as you have to guide it. Gadget number one, and we're going from least stupid to most stupid, the anti-air mine. Added with the release of the Naval Strike DLC, the anti-air mine is available to the engineer class and requires the completion of the death from below assignment, and it caused havoc on the battlefield. At this point in the game's life cycle, people had already become bored of the relentless lock-on weapon usage, so adding this was definitely not a good plan. But on top of this, the gadget required no skill to use. An engineer only needed to equip it in their loadout, spawn in, deploy it, and then the device would lock onto a moving air target automatically and fire. The player, once they deployed it, could just run away and never think about it again and likely get a kill with it. A casual gadget for players who wanted to get cheap kills rather than taking something like an RPG and take out people from below. And furthermore, the weapon was single use, so as soon as it fired, it had self-destruct. This meant if a heli pilot had flared and broken the lock on, there was no second use. You'd be way better off taking an RPG or a s'more, which had at least four projectiles, so you could have that second chance at taking down the target. Gadget number two, the XM25. And I'm not afraid to admit that I rarely get killed by this thing anymore, but thank God. The XM25 is a support gadget that's unlocked through your standard progression within the class, and during the first year of Battlefield 4's life cycle, it was an extremely annoying gadget to come across. The item was added with good intentions, I think, the ability to clear out areas of ground difficult to advance on fully. So for example, snipers camping up on roofs. What the gadget ended up doing though, was exploding rounds through corridors on Operation Locker, netting the user kill after kill through doorways. And although yes, the gadget was being used as intended in real life to clear out areas behind cover, I'm not sure many people on Operation Locker appreciated being killed by a gadget that clearly hadn't been designed to be used indoors. And while the weapon couldn't, and still can't, kill a player with one hit when the player is at max health, the projectiles come at you fast enough that within a few shots, you'd be killed. Infuriating beyond belief, and as I mentioned, I'm thankful that its use has seen a massive decline in the game. RIP XM25, rest long, and never come back. Gadget number three, the M320 3GL. Why, oh why, was this needed? As if we didn't have enough M320 variants already with the high explosive, LVG, dart, smoke, and flashbang, DICE Stockholm felt the need to add a sixth variant to the M320. Introduced in the Naval Strike expansion, the 3GL is unlocked by completing the multi-tool assignment and allowed the user to fire three slightly less powerful grenade rounds than the standard high explosive variant. Once again, I'm sure there were good intentions by DICE for this to be used as a gadget to take down cover, but it ended up on the meat grinder maps causing havoc against infantry. At the time of Naval Strike's release, DICE LA still hadn't got their hands on the game and hadn't implemented their much-loved grenade patch, so the 3GL was yet another explosive device added into Battlefield 4 and didn't seem to have considered the already massive amount of explosive spam. Like the XM25 though, its use since its release has steadily declined and I rarely come into contact with it anymore, but why oh why was it ever added in the first place? Let's not see this one again, eh, Dice? And finally, gadget number four, the most infuriating and stupid of additions into Battlefield 4, 
the SUAV, or the Suave. This edition infuriated me when China Rising dropped, because apart from the fact that it looks different, it's basically a MAV. There was no need for it to be added, other than the fact that it had probably been worked on since before the release of Battlefield 4. For those of you that don't know, China Rising was called Drone Strike before the official release of the information, and with a name like that, it's easy to see why DICE ended up including it. On release, however, it was glitched. Like the Mav, you can roadkill people with it, but back then, after smashing through one player, you could keep flying undamaged and come back for another sweep. This period of time was so infuriating as, again, the Suave could be flown indoors through urban areas and simply destroy infantry on maps like Operation Locker and Operation Metro. And it took DICE ages to get this fixed. So there you have it, some stupid gadgets that I never want to see again. These gadgets only really make sense in a modern setting, but things like the mortar can be transferred backwards and forwards in time, so depending on where the next Battlefield game goes, if it goes futuristic, I don't want to see any kind of stylized versions of this making it forwards, and if it does go to the past then maybe we won't see anything like this at all. But if it goes Bad Company 3 and stays in modern setting, or it is just Battlefield 5 modern day, then I really, really don't want to see any of these gadgets make it anywhere near the final game. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know some of your most hated gadgets in Battlefield 4 in the comments below, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.